All right, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 33, beginning with verse 1 through 5, it begins with a hymn. And you will remember, I've taught you in the past, the Bible talks about we sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs unto the Lord. The Bible tells us that in the New Testament, the book of Ephesians. A psalm is something that's played, uh, an instrument is played along, accompanies the song. And a hymn is an exaltation of deity, an exaltation of God. And, and so when you, when you sing a hymn, you're going to have uh, a song that has to do with exalting the Lord. And it's going to express some doctrinal truth. Then you have spiritual songs. And those are confessions uh, in your life. I want to be closer to the Lord. I want to live better than I'm living. Amen. You know, a confession about how you want to live or a confession about uh, the, what the Lord has done in your life. So when we look at the hymn, then this falls into that category of exaltation, exalting God and declaring that He's a mighty God. Amen. So verses 1 through 5 uh, brings us into a divine council situation. Amen. Now, the Bible says, and this is the blessing, Berakah, wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And really, verse 2 is where the hymn starts. He said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with 10,000 of his holy ones. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Yea, he loved the people, all his saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Every one shall receive of thy words. Moses command, commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob, and he was king in Jeshurun, that means upright, when the heads of the people and the tribes of Israel were gathered together. And then he'll begin talking about the blessings upon the various tribes of Israel. Then go to verse 26, please. The second hymn, there is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven and in thy help and in his excellency on the sky. So by the way, the title of the message is the rider on the clouds. So again, there is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon the land of corn and wine also. His heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee. O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help. Amen. And who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Let's pray. Father, we come before you right now. We ask your blessing to be upon the reading and teaching and preaching of your holy word. God, give us the inspiration and the unction to declare it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Back up just a little bit, please, in Deuteronomy chapter 27, so I can give you some background of these uh, chapters very quickly. Chapter 27, verse 1 through chapter 31 and verse 8 is the third sermon of Moses to the people of Israel right before they're going into the promised land. And we have in this third sermon, beginning with chapter 27, curses upon people who are not faithful to the covenant of the Lord God. Ultimately what that means is. Is that a person who departs from God. Will bring a curse on their life. And those curses that are recorded in chapter 27. You can read them on your own. And then chapter 28. The Bible talks about those that keep covenant. Are faithful to the Lord. And do not apostatize away from him. And serve other gods. He gives us the blessings in chapter 28. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now you keep on going through uh, the book of Deuteronomy. In chapter 29 and verse 12. Deals with covenant. Thou, he says that thou shouldest enter into covenant with the Lord thy God. 
and into his oath which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day, that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto thee a God as he has said unto thee, and he has sworn unto, sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. So God is calling us to covenant and covenant faithfulness in that chapter. Amen. Verse 6 of chapter 30. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Praise the Lord. That is very important because there are a lot of people who try to keep the law of God. For example, they try to keep the Sabbath day. And they're a lot like the Jews in Jesus' day who went through the mechanics of keeping the Sabbath day, but they did not love God. And so when you look at Torah or the instruction of God that we are to obey, we always have to have the internal love of God even over the external code. Because you can be like the Pharisees and scribes and have all the rules down, but if you don't have a heart for God, if you don't love God, then your faith is dead. Amen. So God is telling us here that he will circumcise our hearts, that we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all thy soul, that thou mayest what? Live. How many gods is there? One. Deuteronomy 6. Here always with the Lord our God is one Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. In that same chapter 38, verse 19, he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may what? Live. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice. That thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days. That thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 29, he tells us in this chapter, um, verse 25, it says, Then men shall say, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. For they went and served other what? Elohim. Gods. These are divine spirit beings, okay? Uh, that's why they're called God, Elohim. Not the one true God of the Bible. But they are the gods that are placed over the nations. And the nations begin to worship these lesser Elohim, these spirit beings who apostatized away from God. And God, throughout the book of Deuteronomy, is warning his people, do not allow yourself to be seduced away from the one true God of the Bible and begin to worship these lesser Elohim that we know are demon spirits. Amen. Praise the Lord. So verse 26, For they went and served other Elohim and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not and whom he had not given unto them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law." So throughout the book of Deuteronomy, we have seen, as, of course, even in the song of Moses in Deuteronomy 30, uh, what was it, 32, that they would apostatize away from the true God and begin to worship these lesser Elohims that God placed over the nations. Amen. Now, originally, when God divided the nations at the Tower of Babel, and he placed these lesser, amen, divine spirit beings over those nations, they were supposed to bring everything under the authority of the one God of the Bible. But instead, these Elohim apostatized away from God themselves and re began to receive worship by the nations that they were over. So go to Psalm 82, please, very quickly. In Psalm 82, the Bible says, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. That's, this is that divine counsel, okay? He judges among who? The gods, the Elohim. So here he is, he's standing, God is standing, in the midst of the divine council. That means there are spirit beings, divine spirit beings, Elohim, 
You would call them angels. And he's standing in the midst of that divine council, surrounded by these so-called Elohim. And now verse 2 says, how long will you judge unjustly? You see? So God is rebuking them for not being faithful in their charge from him. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men. So they're not men. They are divine spirit beings. You would call them angels. But they were not faithful to their commission. And so God says to them that they will die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Say praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Go back over to the book of Deuteronomy there. And let's look at Deuteronomy 33 then. All right, praise God. So there's only one God. And that one true God calls us to worship Him as the one true God. The problem is the nations begin to worship these lesser Elohims, divine spirit beings. Uh, Deuteronomy calls them, verse 17 of chapter 32, demons. Okay? And so God is going to judge them. Now, when we look at this, the Bible says... If people departed from the true and living God, begin to worship these other beings, idols, that God would curse that person. And so just look at the curses for those who fall away from God. But having said that, God ultimately in the end is going to reverse the curse that has come upon this sin-cursed earth. That is His plan. And so when we see Deuteronomy chapter 27, it talks about the various curses, some of them like thirst and hunger and nakedness. Well, when Jesus was on the cross, he said, I thirst. And he was hanging naked on the cross. Galatians chapter 3 says that Jesus Christ became a curse for us. So that everything that is recorded there in Deuteronomy chapter 27 in relation to cursing, God took that upon himself on the cross. When he comes back, he's going to reverse the curse that is upon the earth. Amen. And he is going to defeat these lesser Elohim that we understand to be demons or the gods of the nations. One question for you. Who's going to replace them in the divine council? I don't think you know who you are. You're going to find out who you are, okay? And so what we see here, if you look at the end of the Bible, Revelation 22, look at that. Revelation 22, verses 1 through 3. God says this, He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, and in the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bore twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees were what? For the healing of what? Uh-oh. The nations are going to be restored. But when are they going to be restored? After the Lord comes back at the war of Armageddon and destroys these lesser Elohim. These demons, these false gods that the nations worship. He's going to come back and he's going to destroy them at his second coming. And then those nations that were under their power and authority, they will be restored back in fellowship with the true and living God. So he's going to lift the curse and he's going to give trees for the healing of what? The nations and there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him amen so all the way through the book of Deuteronomy uh, this book is amazing because we see a war between God the true God and the gods there is a battle right now between God and the gods 
And when I say the gods, I'm talking about principalities and powers, rules of darkness, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places that are set over the nations. There are spirit beings in this area of Odessa and Midland, which Brother Yates referred to. They have been set in this area, amen, to oppose the counsel of God. So the church has been placed here as a representative of the Lord God, the one true God of the Bible. And we are to defeat those principalities and powers that oppose his counsel. Praise the Lord. Amen. The good news is that God is going to show you in this chapter 33 that he is going to defeat these spirit beings that have these places over the nations. He's ultimately going to judge them. And guess who's going to witness that? You are and I will when he comes back because we're going to be with him. Amen. And so the Bible begins in chapter 33. He said, and this is the blessing, Barakah. Notice that. So in the place of what? Cursing, we have blessing. It's prophetic. A blessing. Somebody puts a blessing on you. We see Moses here, a record of Moses. Uh, I don't know if this is after he died that this record is given because Moses is spoken of in the third person here by the writer. But it, ultimately what we have here is that God is showing us that Moses blessed the people of Israel. He had power to do that. Amen. Brother Robbie Yates said something very interesting to me in, in our talking together. Uh, Sunday night he said brother Carter he said people don't realize that if they hang around the wrong people if those people are cursed if they hang around them they will be cursed and he said brother Carter he said if you hang around somebody that's blessed of God you will be blessed in your life Say praise God. Amen. And so you have to be extremely careful. I know that you go to work. For, you know, some of you go to work or whatever. Do what you do. And you are around people that are cursed. I don't believe as soon as you walk through the door that a curse comes on you. Because they're cursed. But what I'm saying to you. If you enter into a relationship with somebody that is cursed. Then when you do that, you will bring a curse on your life. You don't want anything like that to happen to you. You want the blessings of God to come upon you, the barakah, bar bar the blessings of God to be in your life. So be careful about the relationships that you enter into because you will either have a curse or you will have a blessing. I want to hang around people that have the favor or the blessings of God in their life. I don't want to be in relationships with people who have a curse because I can be cursed in that type of situation. And so praise God for that, uh, that kind of understanding. So here we come. We've got a man that's blessed by God. He's got the favor of God in his life. His name is Moses. And so he begins to bless Israel. Now, you'll notice in Deuteronomy chapter 33 that Simeon is not mentioned and that, you know, when you have time, read the book by J.R. Church, The Song of Moses. And he'll get into great detail. I won't get into great detail today. But he explains that Deuteronomy 32, The Song of Moses, was originally given to Simeon. And Simeon means hearing. Now, what we need to understand, if you look at Deuteronomy 32, what is the first thing that is said there in that song? He says, verse 1, give ear, O you heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. So we already see in that stanza, the first stanza, a reference to hearing, hearing, which is speaking to a tribe called um, Simeon. Now, people who do not have the ability to hear God are under the power and authority of a serpent. When you look at the Word of God, you will see in De uh, Psalm 58, 4 and 5, it makes reference to the serpent. Now listen to me carefully. If you hear God, that means you're like Simeon. 
If you hear God. If you don't hear God, then you are under the control of a serpent. Because serpents are deaf. So if you're deaf tonight and you cannot hear the voice of God, that means there is a spirit, a serpent that has come into your life so you can no longer hear. Now there's a few of you in the church tonight that hear. Some of you act like you have a walk with God. Some of you act like you hear, but you don't because you have come under the authority of serpentine powers. But the true people of God have an ear. That's why Jesus said in Revelation 2 and 3 to the churches, the seven churches of the book of Revelation, he said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Churches. 